So this normally in a normal season from Saturday, which was kickoff, we would have been in the lab for about know, like 30 plus hours over the last three days already. Um, like we have a lot of time we're building and everything, but because of how weird this season is, um, we're kind of getting to choose between a host of a lot of different things. Some of those prepared by first headquarters, the people who normally give us like a brand new game and everything. And some other things that we can do internally, things that we already have been doing um, to where we can kind of meet our goals of the team and what we, the whole reason we exist as a group. Um, so some of those goals that we have kind of like all the time are for you all to learn. That's part of it is we should be hopefully learning interesting things, learning things you didn't know before. Um, gaining new skills. Um, part of it should also be that it's fun. Like this is always and will continue to be an optional thing. Like it's not required. So hopefully you enjoy doing it. Like I know I do. Um, and I hope that you all do too. That's kind of part of it. So if we can choose things that you all want to do, things that you're, we're having fun while we're doing it, um, um, things that we can make more enjoyable in whatever ways we can, um, this should definitely be uh, an activity that you enjoy and not something that is like, something you're not looking forward to. Um, in general, as a team, one of the things we strive to do every year is to be good at what we're doing. So the idea of like chasing excellence, we don't always get there. We're not perfect. We don't win everything we do and we're never going to, but we're always trying to be together as a group, succeeding and excelling at what we're doing. Um, but we can also set those expectations and set those um, ideas of what success is for ourselves. It doesn't necessarily have to come from the different awards and things that First Headquarters puts out. We can decide what it means for this season to be successful. And that's a lot of what we're gonna be talking about today is what does it mean for the next four to five months? What do we actually wanna get done? What will make it so that we together, each of us are proud of what we've done happy what we've done and feel like we've had a successful um, time with the team. Um, this year specifically, because this season is so strange and because we've had, you know, largely not been able to kind of do our normal thing um, for over nine months now, um, we are in some ways also preparing for what should be the next like regular season in 2022, which is a full year away. So we have a lot of years of time to plan for that. But some of that thinking always has to go into kind of what we're doing. It doesn't necessarily have to be the most driving factor, um, but it's just one of the things that is um, on my mind, at least. Um, as we're going to through this, think some about what the day-to-day -day stuff that we're actually doing is and make sure that's the part that we're going to enjoy and like doing, not just the outcome. Um, just doing something because we want the award or recognition at the end is okay, but if it takes three months of things we don't enjoy to get one day of happy celebration that we won something, it may not be worth it. So just keep that balance in mind. Think about what each of these like kind of goal things, think about what we'd be doing day to day, each week, what are we actually working on? Is that something you're gonna enjoy doing? Is it something you're gonna be um, excited to participate in? That sort of thing. Um, the options are kind of broken up into different groups. We'll go through um, the groups one at a time and the different slides of what we can do. So on Saturday, um, HQ gave us our um, different FRC challenges for this year. There's three different groups and each one of those kind of has some different challenges inside of them. Um, the first ones are infinite recharge at home. Um, the beginning of that is we have to submit a, um, some information about a infinite recharge robot. The um, simplest version of that is that we document, we basically create the documents for our 2020 version. It's all the, the 2020 robot could definitely play the infinite recharge at home game and do what it needs to. That's one of the ways you can do it is just using the robot we already have. We would basically be documenting it, um, producing a flyer. There's a presentation that we would give to the judges. They'd be able to ask us some questions. And there is a um, four or five robot awards that we could win. So we could win like the industrial design award or the quality award. 
in kind of our group, we get randomly assigned to groups. It doesn't really, the group assignment thing isn't super important to understand. Um, but basically we'd be competing against about 30 other teams from around the world um, for one of those four awards for this like judged section. Um, this is something that can be done mostly virtual. We could have some amount of our limited in-person time maybe to get some different photos of the robot, that sort of thing if we need them for the presentation. Um, but largely this is things that can be done at home. Um, this is a requirement if we want to do the skills challenges, which are the two things we're talking about next. Um, so this has to be done, we have to submit it by about March 4th. So we have a six to seven weeks to get it done. Um, and then assuming we do that, which we can do that at different, kind of all of these can be done at different levels of effort too. Um, like we have enough information right now that if we got a group of four or five of us together, we could get all of something submitted. We could be done tonight and have stuff ready to submit if we wanted to. We have the cat of the robot. We have all the things ready to do it. We could also spend a lot of time on it and make sure it's really, really good and try to specifically get one of those awards if we really want. So there's different levels we can do all these things to and we'll kind of decide how much effort we want to put into it based on how excited people are to do them and what they're interested in um, from the survey that gets sent out after this. Okay, so the skills challenges, there's two different types. There's um, driver challenges, which is the robot not being autonomous. So we don't have to do as much programming for it. It's just using the robot and having an actual, having the human actually drive it. So there's an obstacle course sort of thing where there's four different paths that the robot has to drive around and we have to time the robot doing it. Um, we have to film all of them and submit our scores. There's an accuracy challenge. So the robot has to has basically um, a certain amount of time, about six minutes to shoot 15 balls from certain um, areas in the field. And the highest point and the most points we get there um, sets our score for that one. And then there's a um, basically like a speed round. We have to score as many um, balls as we can in under a minute. Um, the logistics of doing this is a little bit tricky. We definitely, it's not easy to do at home. I mean, like it's probably possible for someone to have the robot at their house and figure out how to do it in their driveway, but that's really complicated. The most likely and easiest scenario is that we're doing it using some of our limited in-person time at the school. We have um, carpet that we'd be figure out how to roll out either in the um, foyer entryway of a G hall or kind of on like the back patio of a G hall, that covered area, whether we do it inside or outside, it kind of depends on what we need to be able to set up and what makes the most sense. But there'd be some amount of setup time for it. Um, and there'd be some amount of practice time for it. We'd have to set up and make sure we get the cameras right. Um, and that sort of thing. So trying to do it at like absolute elite level would take a lot of time. There's other ways we could do it where maybe we do it over a single weekend. We set it up on a Saturday, get some practice in, film it all of Sunday, and we're just done. And we can be in and out pretty quickly that way. Um, this could be done with either the robot we currently have, Ultraviolet 2020. It could also be done with the Everybot, because we also have 8515, the separate team. So we can enter all of the official challenges twice if we want. Um, so it just kind of depends on what people are interested and excited about doing. Um, in addition to that, there are two of the skills challenges that are fully autonomous. So the robot has to do some of the obstacle course that we could do in the driver challenge, but the robot would do it itself without the driver actually driving it. So we'd have to pre-program all of the motion. Um, and there's another challenge where the robot has to collect three balls on its way across the area, like the 30 feet of carpet or whatever it is. Um, so this would definitely take, um, a little bit more work because there's a lot more prep because we have to do the programming side of it. So we'd need um, at least one, maybe more to be super dedicated to making sure we get the programming aspect of it right. It definitely takes a little bit more, um, takes more of the in-person time because you do have to sit there and tweak and tune and make sure that the um, throw up path can do it depending on how well we want to go. We can, right, we could keep improving that time as we go. Um, and it's possible we could do it in a different way to where like the robot goes to someone's house and they're figuring it out there too. Um, or one of the robots could be a different robot depending on what we need. Like we have the, we have the 2020 robot. We also have a identical 2020 practice bot or close enough to identical robot. Um, 
so we could have a couple different people working on it or it could be loaned out at different times um, we could figure out how to meet up with people and get it back and forth if we need to um, but that definitely takes a lot of commitment if we want to do it at a really high level lower levels not as much um, so those are the infinite recharge at home challenges and we can basically choose to do pretty much any selection of them so if we have to do this one if we want to do the other two well we could just do the driver ones we could do the autonomous one and like one of the driver ones of the five challenges only three of them count if we're trying to win the skills winner or skills finalist right those are the two awards i think um and it just kind of depends on whether how much value we want to put on those awards versus just doing other things um and the effort effort that goes involved in it so whether we're excited about um competing in these or doing other stuff that we're going to list throughout here okay um any questions about infinite recharge at home uh, okay so the second challenge that first hq came out with is the game design challenge so we before they even announced there was going to be a game design challenge this season we had already started and almost complete and basically completed a game design of our own doing we were already doing this um, back in the basically the start of school so um we almost we basically already have more than we need to at least have one of our submissions done so it, it's a game called roll up um this is the field cad for it down here we have basically a full manual which you don't need anywhere close to uh for the submissions we have all of that done um, and it would really just take kind of us summarizing it, getting some high quality photos and stuff done, um, and basically just making a, putting together the submission, but most of the work is basically already done to submit this. Um, so this one is relatively low effort. We think it's a pretty solid game. It should work pretty well for what, to meet all the requirements. Um, and we're pretty okay with that. The um, other option is we can, either not do it not submit roll up at all or we can submit roll up for one of our teams and completely design a new game for the other team so we have 3847 and 8515 so we can do a brand new game whatever ideas and things we want we can go through that whole process again for people who weren't here um, when we were doing it back in august time frame um, there are a few things that we can add to it because there's like a they added a twist to have like this element, which is some any type of chain that we want to add into the game can get you in contention for a certain award. Um, and it is it's a, a lot of useful skills in the game design stuff. One of the reasons why we had already done it before they even told us it was an option um, is because you get to think a little bit like how the games are made and it helps you analyze the games a little bit better. Um, it also is a good CAD challenge, so you get to learn how to do CADing. We this game we would do in on shape. The other game we did in SolidWorks, because that was what we were using before. Um, so there's definitely a lot of options there to get some more CAD stuff. It can be done fully virtual for people who, um, so it's an option that we can do even when we're not able to meet in the lab. We can be doing this, um, and this can be somebody's project. This could be a small group. It doesn't have to be everybody. Um, so if there are a few people excited about it, we can do it even without. This doesn't have to be like the main focus of the entire team pushing this forward. This can just be a few people if, it need, if it, we need it to be. Um, this does move up. So eventually, if you win a couple of the awards and depending on what goes on, you could eventually have like an interview with the actual, the game design committee who designs the real games. They could even potentially use some of our ideas in future games. Um, so there's some cool stuff that comes along with this if we choose to do these. Um, okay. Any questions about the game design options? Uh, okay the third challenge of that first hq gave us on saturday is the innovation challenge so this is more of almost like a entrepreneurship competition kind of thing or a business plan competition we would um we'd have to brainstorm and think of an idea to meet some solution the problem set is basically to help people or community keep regain or achieve optimum physical and or mental health and fitness through active play or movement um, so that's kind of like the problem statement they gave us and it's very broad right a whole host of things could fit into that 
Um, and then we have to build a business model and be able to kind of explain and develop our pitch for the design. We don't have to, the, um, the kind of initial submission is pretty small, actually, from what I remember. I have to go look at it, the exact thing, but you don't have to do a ton of work for the initial submission. Um, and then you would basically have some stuff prepared for the interview. So it doesn't have to necessarily be um, a really large undertaking to just submit for this at the beginning. And then if we end up, the judges kind of like our idea, then we do more work and build it up um, to go further in the competition. So there's a pretty low barrier to entry if this is just something somebody's interested in wanting to do a little bit. Um, it doesn't have to be a ton of work at the beginning um, until we find out if we like kind of advance or not. Um, okay. Um, and again, we could also have, we could have two different teams if we want for that. If there if we have two different competing ideas, we could split people up and we could submit under either number. Um, okay. Any questions at all about any of the FRC specific challenges? Did I miss anything? Um, in oh. the chat, um, oh. Gregory Nicolin has a question. Um, so, yeah, sorry. Um, we do not have to CAD anything, I don't think, for the initial plan. Yeah, I, think you may, you may, like, I think you can probably submit something, but I don't know if you have to fully CAD it. It could be sketches. Like, the, the way I read it, the initial submission is pretty small, um, and then you, like, build it out if you get selected. Um, so it's possible that we could go that far and have more, like the more we have ready, it's probably the better we have a chance of getting selected to move on. Um, but I don't think it's required more than just having like a, there's a pretty small amount to be at the ready. I need to reread it to make, for, to know for sure, but it's a relatively low bar. Um, okay, so the, um, the next three things are what are considered the traditional submitted awards. So that every season, we have the opportunity to submit these awards and that, that continues this year. Um, so these are awards that aren't, they're judged um, normally at events, but they don't have to be. So you, have, you basically have things that you have to pre-submit ahead of time. Um, and so they're able to be done virtually pretty easily. One of those is the chairman's award. Um, so this award is given at um, all of our events if you win it at the world championship level, it's you become part of the Hall of Fame of first, basically. Um, and it's the, the idea is that this award embodies, um, is given to the team that best embodies like the mission of first and is a role model for other teams. Um, we've submitted for it. Uh, we basically submit for it every year. Um, we won it the first year. I was involved with the team in 2012, the first year we were able to win it. You're not able to win it your rookie year. Um, and then we won it in 14, 17, and 20 as well. Um, we've had several people, um, mostly led by Kathleen, working on the executive summaries, which are like short answer questions. So we've already have most of those. We have drafts of those basically, but they still need, they'll get tweaked and things. We make sure that they're um, grammatically correct and that all of our ideas are very clear. Um, and then we also have a 10,000 character essay to write from that. Um, and once that's like kind of our initial submission, and then we get, we sign up for an interview slot and we'll have a zoom interview with the judges where we have to do a roughly seven minute presentation with two to three of our students. And then the judges will ask questions of them as well to get a better idea of what everything goes. And then if we're, um, selected, there are, how does it work this year? I didn't write it on the slide. There are nine, um, district level chairman's awards for the state of Texas this year and three state championship level chairman's awards. So we have the potential to win one of the nine. And then if we're one of those nine, three of those teams are selected to win the state championship. Um, and so again, this is one of the things that we basically do every year, but we do have the ability to kind of decide how much effort and how much time do we put into um, our submission for this, preparing for the interview, and all of that. Uh, okay, um, another one of the awards, so the next two are basically their awards not for um, the entire team, they're for individuals. Um, so one of them is the Dean's List Award. And so this is given to um, individual students on teams, either 10th or 11th graders. Um, 
And so we'll have a nomination form separate that I need to still produce that will go out to where student, anybody on our team can nominate people, um, including themselves if they want um, to be chosen. Um, this year, because we have the second team, we actually have the ability to nominate up to four students. Um, the mentors write the submission. So normally it's been uh, myself and Sue Ann um, leading that effort. And then the students are also interviewed um, one uh, with like, there's a two judges will interview a student um, as part of the um, judge criteria or whatever as part of the, the process for the award. Um, and then some of them are selected to, I think there's 15 possible slots for the district level and five state championship spots as well. Um, so again, this is one of the things we do. And once we get the nomination forms, we'll figure out with the students that are selected, how much um, effort we wanna put into interview prep and kind of all of that effort that goes into that as well. Um, the last submitted award is the um, Woody Flowers finalist award um, submission. So um, this is the award that I won at the world championship level in 2019. Um, and it's basically roughly similar to like a mentor of the year award. Um, it's, there's more than that, but it's, it's recognizing um, a member, a mentor from a team each year um, who effectively communicates, leads, inspires their students, all that. And we can um, nominate one of our other mentors for it at the um, state level. So one person out of all of the Texas teams, one one of the submitted essays from all the Texas teams um, will be um, selected for that. But the real, but a, lot, a large portion of it isn't just to try to win the award. One of the really nice things, it's a very good way to thank mentors for helping you. Um, it allows them to see that like the, what they're doing is impactful. Um, so writing it, even if we don't think we necessarily are going to win is still very useful. Um, last season, Sudan was nominated. Um, so that is another thing that gets done and the students write that essay. Um, and this is definitely fully virtual. It's just getting the essay written um, and submitted before the deadline. Um, okay, any questions about the submitted awards? Um, so in that we basically would need, depending on like, who's interested in helping, we obviously need some help people to help write um, the WFFA essay to help write chairmen's and um, a couple more people to help present for chairmen's as well. Um, and it's very likely that we, we, we almost certainly will submit for all of them. A lot of what we're just figuring out is who's, who can, who's willing and can excited to help us do these things um, and then how much effort we're gonna put behind all of them. Um, but it, we're almost certainly going to submit for all of them. Okay, um, so moving forward, these are no longer things that are kind of in, that are required to do before any specific deadlines necessarily. Um, some of them kind of can, because we could use some of these things. Um, if we just, depending on how far we get, how quickly, we could use some of them in like infinite recharge at home if we want. Um, but by no means do they have to. If these things don't get finished until the summer, that would be fine. So we have a lot more flexibility with basically everything coming forward. They're not necessarily part of the official FRC season if we don't want them to be. Um, okay, so um, one of the things we can work on is um, using, is improving the 2020 robot that we do have. So, um, Ultraviolet last year got to compete at one event. It got to compete at Dripping Springs. We won that event, so the robot is pretty good, but it also had many issues. Its drivetrain was basically breaking every match. It had ball jams. Um, it was by no means perfect. And there was a lot that we were planning to do on it through the rest of the season before the 2020 season got shut down. Um, so there's definitely things that we can do to improve that. Um, there are some limitations in that it's we got to figure out if we're we'd be using some of our in-person time to have to do testing on that figure out how to implement them and work on it but that's something that we can definitely do potential what do you what does figuring out how to accurately shoot from deep mean uh just means getting like increasing our accuracy as we get further away from the goal oh um so um 
sorry, I'm just catching my train of thought. Okay, so um, there is a potential that we have some in-person play events. My guess is no earlier than towards like the end of May, early June. Um, most likely towards July and into the fall. Um, if they happen at all, some of that is there's a lot of things that are way outside of our control to know if those ever happen. Um, first HQ has to give the go ahead for any areas to compete. Um, and then first in Texas has to give a go ahead for Texas to compete. Um, so there's a lot of things that could happen in there. We have no way to know if they will, um, but having the robot improved and ready is something we can definitely do. Um, so that's one of the things we can work on that's in the survey. Um, the um, next option is to um, design and build a Swerve infinite recharge robot. A lot of this would definitely be the actual CAD design for it first, because there's a ton of work that has to go into actually getting the design right before we just like start building. Um, Swerve, for those who don't know, is a new drivetrain concept for us. It's been around for a long time in FRC. We've just never done it. Um, there are a host of reasons why it's easier, and there's a host of reasons why we're kind of moving in that direction. Um, but basically, this um, um, before we started this call, um, I was kind of describing it, and um, Luke gave a really good explanation for it. It's basically like a powered caster wheel. So this motor on this side has this belt here, and it's able to spin the wheel in any direction. So this wheel can be turned around, and the robot can point the wheel wherever it wants to go. And then this motor, um, through some interesting gearing, is actually driving this wheel forward and backwards. It's able to rotate the wheel. And so you have four of these, one on each corner. And then the robot can drive in any direction, forward, backward, sideways. It can actually be turning while driving forward. So it allows it to be a lot more maneuverable. Um, um, but it, because it's something we haven't done, it's definitely a little bit more complex than our past drivetrains. Um, it's something that we basically need to test if we're going to actually implement it in 2022 season. So some of this would be basically kind of prepping for 2022, but it's also a new thing that we haven't done um, and gives us some more. Um, actual robot building and things that we can be doing. Um, it's definitely a big undertaking getting like whole new subsystems built if we want to make it actually play infinite recharge. Um, one of the reasons why it's kind of down here and not up in the at home events, because I don't trying to force ourselves to get it done before that um, March 4th deadline is definitely going to be really tight. Um, so this would probably be a project that would stretch longer into the semester than just the beginning of March or into April. Um, it does give us like a test platform to make sure we can kind of do swerve well before the 22 season. Um, and if we had events in the summer or fall, it's possible we could compete with this robot if we got it finished and complete and decided it was good enough. Um, and it's even possible that we could compete with it for 8515 and still compete with ultraviolet for 3847 if we have events in the fall or summer. Um, sorry, the summer or fall. Uh, okay, um, a, another option is using our, um, using 8515 as, and building a different um, sort of, um, I'm trying the best way to just, like simpler robot that's more of a standard robot than the Swerve idea. Um, so we could possibly build it faster. Um, yeah, what's up, Luke? Um, well, you said 8515, and I'm assuming that's a different team, so I guess, um, Spectrum, we also build robots for a different team, or is this... Or is uh, yeah, it... so so this is confusing. So, the, uh, good question, because this, this, this is a confusing situation. So, this year, we registered a second team number. So, Spectrum exists as 3847. We also have 8515 as what we are describing as our development team, um... The, it, it made it sense financially. It also makes sense because if there are events in the spring or, or in the summer or fall, we're able to basically register two teams, especially if they are, um, if they're capped on the number of students we're allowed to bring to them, which is very possible because you're only, they have to keep size down during all of the COVID things. Um, because we have two teams, instead of only being able to bring 10 students or 15 students, whatever the cap is, we can bring double that. And we could, and we also get that double experience of having people more matches all of those things. Um, and we had the 
financial situation to be able to do it. It made sense that way. Um, so we have the team registered and we can kind of use it however we need to. Um, and then even going into 2022, it will also, it'll probably, it'll compete in district level events in 2022 as well, just because we're still going to need more event practice time and just building our, um, getting more experience because we've had a year plus of not competing. Um, so yeah, so this option is basically um, building a simpler robot than what would be on top of the Swerve robot, most likely. There's some, there's maybe some like middle room of building like a simple robot on top of the Swerve robot. So something like that could happen too. Um, it just kind of depends on how quickly we need to get them done, what people are interested in doing. Um, they both definitely require quite a bit of CAD time. We're going through and actually using a lot of the stuff we looked at last year, but now really, or last semester, but now really implementing it um, in CAD, getting a plan, um, making sure we're really efficient with our in-lab time to when we're producing parts, assembling, getting stuff done pretty quickly. Um, and yeah, this would definitely be a little bit easier than a new Swerve robot, because we know how the drivetrain works. Programming for it's a little simpler, um, but doesn't necessarily get us um, kind of as far prepared for 2022. Um, but that's not necessarily, we can, we could do this this semester and get the Swerve robot done in the summer. Uh, like there's a whole lot of different um, ways we can get the timing done. Um, okay. Um, another option is getting a tiny Swerve built. So instead of a Swerve that's actually designed to play the game, we make something a lot smaller. Um, that's literally just like a test chassis that we can have. Um, it's easier for somebody to like take it home, practice driving with it, practice programming with it. Um, and it just fits in smaller spots, a lot, spaces a lot easier, but it still kind of gives us a lot of the um, experience that we need with this new type of drivetrain. Um, and I don't know, um, with this one, I guess also um, like those uh, driving challenges, um, the at-home driving ones, this one could um, compete in those, right? Um, potentially, it depends on how fast we get them done and yeah. they still have to submit, you still have to, you still have to submit the at-home judge stuff for it. Whatever robot you submit the at-home judge material for is the one you have to use for the skills challenge. So there is some amount of like how that would work team number like maybe if if we did build this fully and we submitted it for 8515 maybe that would work um it just kind of depends on which way that makes sense um uh, or which what what people actually decide they're interested and excited about and we'll move forward with that as we get through the kind of survey thing okay um so yeah those are options in terms of like at least getting um at least getting the designs ready for robot builds and starting to work on them um, throughout the semester. Um, some other things we can do if we don't want to get full robots, because full robots are a little bit tricky, especially when we're meeting in small groups and things, you'll definitely, not everyone's going to see every piece of these get built because we're there's never going to be a time where we're going to have, or not this semester, it's very unlikely that we're going to have time to be able to put 25 plus of us in, a, in, in the build lab at the same time, right? That's just not feasible we don't have enough room for that and we definitely can't put 25 people around any single robot um so there's definitely be like people taking shifts we'd sign up for different days um and we could all be working on the cat and things but not everyone would be able to do the actual in-person stuff or they would be, be like missing steps of it if that makes sense um some other things we can do are we can continue doing some of the things we piloted over winter break where we had kind of like tool training and like one day projects where we just come in and there's like plans or instructions. And we have people there to help build something over a single day. Um, you know, in a few hours we can get something built and we can get some experience doing the, the, the building and um, possibly some of it could be a little bit more designed. We could design stuff for a couple of weeks virtually and then come in and do the build um, over uh, a few hours on the weekends. Um, so the rubber band car is an example of this. Um, we had about, how many people do we have? Like nine, 10 people. I don't remember exactly how many total um, build the rubber band cars and those went pretty well. Um, 
the design needed some work, but that was my fault. But the actual building process, um, I think everyone did a really good job um, there. Um, there's some other things we could do. We could do some electrical things. Um, we have some amount. We started thinking about other ones that we could do um, last week. So there's like fidget, uh, some sort of like fidget toys and some chain things because there's some different tools that we have to get trained on so people can learn how to use um, some electrical things, some different ideas that we could get done. Um, there's a portable control system that we need to build so we can do some of the FRC level wiring and stuff. So there's a lot of different projects that we could do. Um, um, with electrical some of these stuff like that. Um, and I, I would say that I have a decent amount of experience with that. I play around with like um, Arduinos and stuff. I have a whole bunch of chips, so I could probably help with that stuff. That is awesome. Thank you, Luke. Okay, so um, yeah, so that is an option of getting more of the hands-on things, um, and it, requ it definitely requires a little bit less um, full, like, project planning on people's part. Like, the, there's less sort of commitment. People can come in, sign up for their day, do the two to three hours, whatever it is, um, and basically be able to accomplish something pretty quick. Um, is, other options are doing more um, specific CAD training. So where we have um, design projects, we're, do, we're gonna start meeting in Discord for these so we can see, so I can bounce around and actually see how people are doing in CAD and kind of directly help a little bit more than what we were trying to do in the fall where people were kind of just watching me and that didn't really work. So I've talked to other teams and found out what worked for them. We're gonna bring some of their um, techniques over to make it a little bit better. Um, but there are a lot of some of those smaller projects that we could also eventually, some of this may kind of link back to these projects where we do some design first and then we actually come in and build them. Um, some of them would be robot projects, some of them could be other things just getting much more familiar with Onshape because we definitely need to have um, quite a few people familiar for, with Onshape by the time we are um, designing and building a robot for an FRC season. Um, and like I said, a lot of this, I wanna just back and be clear, a lot of these things we'll be doing kind of no matter what, it's just a matter of where we're focusing. So a lot of what the survey is, is what are you most excited about? So I know where to put much of like my effort um, and a lot of some of like the, the other leadership of the, the team's effort into getting designed and ready and how we're spending our time, that sort of thing. Like we'll probably do a little bit of a lot of these things, um, kind of no matter what, unless there's just like no interest in them. Um, but a lot of that, so kind of what I'm saying is don't just, when we go to the survey, don't put everything the same number because that doesn't really help me decide what we want to do. If there's things you're actually interested in, kind of differentiate as much as you can. There's some places for notes or whatever. Say, hey, I really want to do this. The more feedback I can get, the more likely it is we're going to be doing the thing you want to do. Um, or I can definitely work it in and make sure that um, we're doing it more often. Um, okay, another thing that we, this is another one that kind of has to get done, but can be get done slower or faster, depending on how people are excited about it. Um, but there's things that we need to do in the lab to get um, tools upgraded, organi organized, and just be better able to use the space. Um, a lot of these things are things we normally do over summers, but we lost all of last summer, we weren't in the lab. Um, so a lot of stuff, we just like, a lot of the stuff is just like built up and we just have a lot of different things we can be doing. Some of them take some design, like there's some CAD stuff where we make some stuff to make some of the tools and some of the areas better. Um, some of this we have to do this weekend anyway, because we just need to get it clean enough to where we can do other stuff. Um, cause it's definitely a little bit messy right now. Um, there's some new tools that we have that we still have to get set up. So we have to get the... We have 3D printers. Some of them are still getting shipped, but we have to get them like assembled. So we'll eventually be able to loan them out to people so people can learn to do some 3D printing at home. Um, the new router is getting better, but there's still work we have to do. Some of that will get done this weekend. Um, we have a whole new powder coating setup that has to get ready. Um, a lot of stuff has to get moved around, reorganized, cleaned up. Um, some of it's getting trained on tools, that sort of thing too, all has to get done. Um, okay, and then the last option is different from the 
at skills at the like the skills challenges or the at home challenges in that we're not submitting these for anything. So we have quite a few of our robots that either are drivable right now or can be with a little bit of effort, um, like a few repairs, making sure we have the right code on it and things. Um, so we can have days where we just come in and teach people to drive and operate the robots that we do have. Our 2020 robots work, 2019 works. 2018, I think, needs some repairs. 2014 works. I think that's all of them at the moment. Yeah, 2017 is gone. So yeah, 20, 2020, 2019, 2018, and 2014 could all drive with moderate amount uh, of work. What happened um, to 2017? It got taken apart. We needed parts from it for something, and then it never got put back together. They, they, they all eventually have that fate, just over time. Um, Why for, didn't 2014 get taken apart? It's a good demo robot, so we managed to keep it running. Um, it also was the last year of the old control system, so we didn't need any of the control system parts from it. So it never got it never got its uh, bits taken off because we didn't need them. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this gives people the opportunity to drive. We would, similar to kind of the at-home challenges, we would figure out a way to get probably the carpet rolled out. We'd find different, we'd set up different mini games or something. Um, one of the other teams had ways that they set up um, kind of like a leaderboard. So they had like a internal competition between the different drivers and operators. And they were like, okay, our goal is to get this many balls moved across the field or something like that in this much time um, or like time driver course challenges. Um, and we did it within the team instead of just trying to like compete outside the team. Um, some of this would also, assuming once you driving the robot is never just driving the robot, it's also repairing it because anytime you drive the robot, there's a chance and likelihood that either something breaks or has to get maintained. So where there's always maintenance on it, like one of the things we do at events is as soon as it comes back from a match, there are people in the pit whose job it is to make sure all the bolts are tightened, make sure all the wires are good. Like things, there's always stuff that has to get not necessarily repaired, but just we uh, preventative maintenance a lot of the time. We're just making sure that it's still the way it's supposed to be. Um, so anytime we're driving it, that stuff has to happen basically no matter what. Um, so some of that would be going on too um, if we have these planned days to do some amount of robot driving. Okay. Um, this last slide is just some of the um, kind of like all the deadlines in one place. So the first um, kind of four are the actual FRC challenge deadlines that sort of have to happen. So we're coming up pretty quick on Dean's List and Woody Flowers. Um, they're here in about a month, which is a little crazy, a month and a week, five weeks, something like that. Uh, and then chairman's is right after. Then we have the submissions for the challenges and all the way until the end of April for the home skills challenges um, with that robot. Okay, so I missed one. Yep, there it is. Okay, um, sorry, my bad. I skipped a slide. I was very really confused. I was like, I never did a, I have a video for this one and I never clicked on it. Um, okay, so one of the other things we can do um, Similar to CAD is we, we tried to start doing this at the beginning of the semester, but the simulator stuff wasn't fully um, developed all that well. So there was, we ran into some hurdles I was trying to get fixed, but it required other people who wrote the software to fix them. And they finally have, from what I can tell, I still need to do some testing to make sure it's all right. But from all the reports now, it seems like it's good. Um, so there's a lot more we can do with the programming simulator. We can do like Auton stuff in the simulator and there's like a map that'll, sh there's like a field map that'll show up and you can see like a virtual robot moving around. So it's a lot more um, complete than it was when we tried to work on it back in September, October. Um, the other thing that exists are these robots down here in this corner called the Rami robot. Um, there have been several people who write the um, WPI library stuff, and they've worked to get these Rami robots compatible with it. So you can basically run the simulator, but have it run on these tiny robots. Um, so instead of just having the simulator go, you could have this thing acting like it's an FRC robot driving around um, and doing a lot of the same um, Auton tasks that we have to do in like we could have a mini version of the obstacle courses for the Rami robots instead of doing it with the big robots. So people could do these at home. Um, we have 
three of them in my living room right now. Um, I need to get them tested and make sure they're going to do what we want, but then I'll order more. Um, and then we get, so like, this is probably how we do programming training going forward. So like fall 2022, we're probably, or fall 2021, we're probably using these no matter what, but this semester, depending on what people are excited about, um, we may accelerate this and I'll try to get it out quicker. Um, but they are useful and they give you some amount of hands-on stuff to go along with the um, simulator as well. So we can have more people doing the um, Java programming for the robot. Um, okay. So that's about all the slides I have. Does anyone have questions about any of the project options? Does anyone have, are there like other ideas? People are like, oh, these are all cool, but I want to, there's something else I want to do that doesn't fit into any of these categories. Um, nothing? Um, okay, so this is the um, this is the survey. Um, I'm gonna put it in Slack right now. So the link to the slides are here too. We can read through them again. Um, the all the questions zero is lowest level of interest you're just not excited about it at all five is the i really want to do this level um name start with any sort of like i basically put this question here to kind of get you overall thinking about what you want to learn and areas you want to be doing things um so this is kind of just general doesn't have to be any of those specific activities um just more kind of what areas are you most excited about? Freeform answer, um, just let me know. Um, and then all of these are pretty quick. They're basically just, um, oh, I take it back, sorry. These ones are, this specific set of questions is about how do we think we should use our limited in-person time? So a lot of these activities can be done with some amount of virtual and some amount of in-person. And I'm trying to figure out what amount of the in-person time do we focus on? So um, there's a couple different answers that kind of are um, sort of generic from some of these different activities that we can pull out and spend the specific in-person time doing. So if it's um, building and assembling um, mechanical projects that like I design or other people on the team design, so similar to like the mousetrap car type thing, or even if it's some of the robot stuff, it may be that we're, um, doing the Swerve robot, but then only like one or two of us design it and people come in because they just want to help build it, but they don't really want to help design it. Um, is there, or is it things where you want to build and assemble stuff that you help design? So where we're doing more of the CAD stuff um, virtually, and then we have days to come in where people can build the stuff that they design in CAD. Um, is it learning to drive and operate the robots? So that's more of the robot practice stuff or potentially the skills challenge stuff, depending on when or how we get there. Um, is it um, electrical opponents? Is it learning to learning to solder? Um, learning to wire the FRC robot stuff? Do we want to do that in person? Um, is it some amount of programming in person? So there is some things where we have to test on the um, competition robots and doing our programming directly on there. Um, and that can be through a couple of those different challenges and different things we're working on. Um, learning to use and operate more of the tools. Um, building more stuff with the um, the router, 3D printers, all of that sort of thing um, falls in here. Um, um, organizing and prepping the lab for future work. There's a ton of just reorganization stuff that needs to get done. Some of it I can do alone. Some of it's a lot easier when we have multiple people there. Um, and then this last one is more specific because this is a little, it's questionable in that like the time frame it takes to do the skills challenge, we can do it with a small amount of our in-person time or we could spend like all of our in-person time and just make sure we win the skills challenge. Um, and that's kind of where we're at is like, is this, is winning the skills challenge more important than doing basically like any of these other things and we should devote all of our time to that. Um, okay, and then the next section is pretty much just these 
items, like the titles of these slides listed out. Um, I think I just copy and pasted them. So it's literally like, okay, do how much do you, are you specifically um, excited about doing the inferiority charge judge submission? So this doesn't need to be, um, all of these answers should be what you think um, you want to help with and you want to do, not what you think the team should do. Um, so even if you're like, somebody on the team should do this, don't, don't worry about that. It's if, if we're meeting and we're saying, hey, we're working on this thing, this is the thing that you're excited about. This is what's going to um, get you to come and help us and be part of the meeting and that sort of thing. Um, and so it's basically all of the ones that we went over already um, that you um, have the option to select. Okay. Um, and then there's a couple last things. Um, we're, we'll need people to help us present for a variety of those different awards. So they were talked to the judges over Zoom. Um, so ideally we'd ask that if there are people who are excited about doing that to put yes, if you're open to doing it, but it's not something to show you absolutely wanna do, throw in a maybe. Um, and if you absolutely don't wanna do it, hit no, we won't force you. I definitely highly encourage it. Um, we will help prepare people as much as you can. We'll do like sample, sample interviews and presentations with us before you have to go into the judges. Um, we try to make it as easy and not stressful as we can. There's always some amount of that. It is some sort of public speaking, even though it's you're still in your house talking to a computer this year. Um, so it should be a little bit easier, a little bit more comfortable. Um, but that's definitely something we want to um, help people doing. You don't also, it doesn't matter if you think you are good at it or not. That's not what we're asking at all. Like we definitely can help make people better at presenting, make people better at talking to judges, public speaking, whatever that is. Um, it's really just if you're open to helping us do those presentations, that's all we're asking. Um, it's totally like we've had people who were, who absolutely hated public speaking, thought they were terrible at it. And we've had them be awesome judge presenters in the past. So it does not have to be something that you think you're good at to say, yes, you'd like to help. Um, and then the second to last question is, is there any, any one of those projects or goals or things that you're just like, absolutely. Yeah. I want to help be the person kind of in charge of it and lead the way and do it. Cause there's several of them that we don't need the entire team for. It can be two or three people. Even one person can kind of just lead, take the ball and run with it. Um, and kind of get a lot of it done checking in with me, checking in with the group when we have Zooms and stuff, but it doesn't need to be a lot of people um, working on some of them. So if there's a specific thing that you really want to do, we probably have the time and resources to potentially do it. Um, so definitely let me know if there's something you really want to get done um, or if there's something you're really excited about. Um, and then the last question is basically just what does a successful semester look like for you? So this isn't, again, this isn't necessarily Team goals, again, this is what does it look like for you as a member of the team? What is it that you want to be doing? You want to learn, get accomplished, um, that sort of thing. OK, um, any questions about the survey or anything else we talked about? All right, um, if not, that's all I had. I managed to keep it at just about an hour, which I don't quite good at time. Uh, okay. Um, if not, that's all I have. Please answer the survey. Eesh, no later. Ideally by like tomorrow night would be awesome. But worst case, like Thursday by school end. Um, I'd like to be able to like start making a decision and start discussing our plans on Thursday um, if possible um, by like 4.15. So the earlier before that, the more likely it is to kind of fit into our plan making. Um, I don't have anything did else. Post, oh, sorry. Did you post the slides on um, Slack? Uh, I can post the link too. It's at the top of the survey, but I'll throw it in here too. Um, right. The slides are actually like right above that too. So yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> but. They're there again, it's fine. <laughs>